wonder for Jesus. Shall we rise on our feet? I want us to do some prayer this morning. Lift up your right hand with me. Lift up your right hand with me and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for my life. Thank you for how far you brought me. I am grateful to you, Lord. This morning, I'm before you, Lord. Bless me before I leave. Let your presence, let your power, let your glory overshadow me in the name of Jesus. Any form of limitation, any form of setback, anything that will hinder me from receiving your word, I pray this morning that you will turn it away. Touch me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Direct me for this week by your word. In Jesus' name. Say a big amen and take your seat. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like that vim. I like that vim. Put your hands together. Amen. amen. I want to speak to you on a message I've entitled, Who Pushed Me? Turn to somebody and ask the person, Who Pushed Me? Who pushed me? <laughs> person is, but, <laughs> which respond? Tell some, ask somebody, Who Pushed Me? What is the person saying? I didn't push you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Tell somebody else who pushed me. Amen. Amen. No, but this push is a good one. Amen. Now, in Genesis 37, we were told of the story of Joseph, how the brothers plotted or planned to end his life because. He was the favorite one. He was the one that is favored by God and the father loved so much. And always dreaming and telling the brothers and thinking that, oh, this is a lovely family that I can share my dream with. But little did he know that his own household, the wickedness of the wicked is coming from his own household and directly from the brothers. They hated him to the core. But one thing I believe that he who God has blessed, no one can curse. So the Bible says they hated him so much. So in Genesis 37, and I want us to read from verse 18, they plotted of killing him. And his, their younger brother, Reuben, who is a direct blood brother of, Dave, uh, of Joseph, behind I me, mean, the one following him, said, why do you want to kill my brother, our brother? Let, not, not, let, let, not, let us not saw our hands with blood. So he gave a suggestion. And this is the suggestion. Genesis 37 verse 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Verse 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer comes. Other versions said, Behold, there comes the dreamer. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit and we will say some evil beast had devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams and Reuben here he heard it and Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said let us not kill him and Reuben said unto them shed no blood but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might read him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was, was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, this coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Verse 25. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilad with their camels bearing spice, spice, spicery and 
with palm and mare going to carry it down to Egypt. Verse 26. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Verse 27. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be, be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content and were content with what he said. Then they passed, then there passed by the Bidianites merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. You know the preceding story. The Bible says that after that he ended up in the house of Potiphar. The wife tempted him. So many challenges. Amen. Amen. So many challenges. But I want to, I mean, settle on the verse we just read. The verses we just read. You know, there are some challenges we find ourselves in. And those particular challenges, they are not to kill us. Do you know that? Have you been there before? Mm, I know this statement coming to me is strong, but let me say it. Not every enemy is a bad enemy. No, is somebody in church? Yes. There are some enemies that are good ones. I know, I know that response will come. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Are you in church? <laughs> Nobody, don't worry. No, there are some enemies that God uses to, to push you into your next level. If not for the coat of many colors, the brothers will not think of killing Joseph. Are you getting me? And if not for Ruby, they would have ended the lives of Joseph. And if not for the pit, Joseph would not have been bought by the Ishmaelites. The pit is not to kill you. The pit is not to kill Joseph. The pit wasn't a pleasant place, but it was a preserving place. There are challenges we face in life that God allow to prepare us for the next phase of our lives. If you don't go through a phase of a challenge, you wouldn't understand the next phase of your life. So there are some challenges that are meant to come our way, not to kill us, but to make, 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 make us. Joseph find himself in the pit. And why is it in the pit? I came to kind of fraternize with my brothers. I came to have fun with my brothers. And I ended up in the pit. The Bible says the pit was dry. If the pit was full of water, I think it would have ended Joseph's life. But can I borrow these words and can I tell you by insight right now that the reason why the pit was dry is because at that particular time Time, God made it dry to preserve Joseph. Say challenges. There are so many things we, we face that come to us on plan because the enemy will always meant it for evil, but God always used the plan of the enemy to prepare us to the next phase of our lives. I may not know the challenge you are going through. But please, we don't have to be hypocritical because there are times I have been to church when I was growing up in faith and there are times you come to church but you are troubled. There are times you come to church you don't even have offering to give. There are times you come to church the next meal you will not know where it's coming from. But that particular time, so far as you have survived and you can sit under the sound of my, vo and my voice, it means that back look at time, God allow it so that when you have plenty, you will know how to manage. No, 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 but nowhere cool. Tell somebody, nowhere cool. No, I can't hear you. 
Say it one more time. Who pushed you into that challenge? Thank God for the one who pushed you. Now, when you ask the question, the person may understand. Ask again, who pushed you? Do you know sometimes what we call comfortable zone is not rather a, a perfect zone. It's a zone to limit your progress in life. But God will take you out of the luxury because of your tomorrow and will drop you in the midst of challenges that need to prepare you for the greater future ahead. Is somebody in church? Yes. I can't hear you. Is somebody in church? Yes. Joseph had a better plan. Joseph, I believe so strongly, Joseph was not having any issue so far as the brothers are concerned. He was thinking that these are my blood brothers and they mean good. They, they meant good for me and everything they think about me was good. Little did they know that his dream was the trouble, was the problem. His dreams was the challenge. His dreams, why do you share your dreams? There are things you share with people and you think that, oh, this is something good to share. And by facial expression, they laugh with you. They smile. But inside their mind is different. No, no, no. Check those who are working with in your offices. Check those who are working with in your offices. Check, check. Check those who call friends around you. Check your family. Check your family. Amen. Whatever the challenge is, I came to one. I came with one word: that that challenge will not end your life. I don't know what you are going through right now, but God will turn it for your good. Amen. The Bible says in First Samuel chapter one verse six, Penina on daily basis provoked Anna. Saying all sorts of things so that Hannah will give up. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What is provoking you right now? Charlie, you wake up every morning and people think everything is fine, but you know there's a challenge. We are married to the same man. God has blessed you with children. Why are you pestering me? And the Bible says, daily, day by day, this woman continue, provoke, continue to provoke Hannah because his, her womb is closed. Please, I am not here to pretend as a pastor and think all is well. I know, I know, I'm also a human being. There are times it feels like dropping that Bible and don't go to church. There are times it, it feels like, ah, the more I fast, the more challenges are increasing. But let me tell you something. The more you fast, the more you torture the kingdom of darkness, the more you give the kingdom of God trouble, and the more you position yourself spiritually for God to reward you. A genuine woman of God on daily basis was being provoked. But he kept on praying. He never gave up. He kept on pushing. He never gave up. Let me tell you something. We have two more months to end the year. Is that not it? Hello? Those who were having more than you, some have been buried. You know that. Hello? Those who think they were fine this year, some are not having it easy. So far as health is concerned. But you are fine. Is that not it? Now you can drink water right now. Is that not it? Go to Kolibu now. People have been, there are tools in the throats of people so that they can drink water. Oh, you can ease yourself freely. Is that not it? There are tools in the tummy of people so they ease themselves through that place. It tells you that no matter what you are going through, there is always a way out of it. God is using this current challenge for your tomorrow. 
Why? I have prayed. I can't find money. I have prayed. Things are bad. The more I pray, things become tough. Yes, it's getting tougher and tougher because the next level of your life is greater and greater. And until you are made tough, you cannot get greater. I'm asking you somebody here. Until you are toughing in the spirit, you cannot be greater. I'm asking you somebody here. God is giving you little resources to manage right now so that when there is abundance, you'll be able to manage it. I'm asking you somebody here. Tell somebody that challenge will not kill you. No, no, no. Say it again. That challenge will not kill you. It is making you better and better. I know you get this message. I know. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Joseph was sold to slavery. And he found himself in the house of Potiphar. By the grace of God upon him, favor was activated. In that house, he was made the chief, I mean servant in the house. So many things happened. We know the story. The Bible says his master's wife tempted him. And he conspired against him. And told a lie against him. And from the pit, he was dropped into cells. Dimension of troubles. Hakaluba had a sayers. He was moved from the pit. Not into a good home. That home he entered was a prototype of sale. <laughs> Why is God moving me from no innocency to trouble, from trouble to another trouble? God was preparing Joseph. The dimension of leadership that will be released, that will be given to him, that will be released into his hand, he must be able to go through sin to be glorified. And I prayed, huh? what can I do? When I even come to church, I don't see anything. I have read the Bible, nothing is happening. Your colleagues are using ways and means. You want to use ways and means? Praise God. I clap for you. Go and use ways and means. But I know and I can hear that one day Joseph, Joshua said, For as for me and my house, as for me and my house, whether things are tough, whether things are bad, whether things are good, whatever it is, as for me and my house, we shall continue. We shall praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You need to keep focus. Keep praising God. Keep worshiping God. A time will come. And the same time is now. Your today may be bad. Your today may be challenging. But I'm here to tell somebody. Your tomorrow will be good. I'm not talking to only two people here. If you are the two people, rise up on your feet. Sound my tomorrow will be good. in the prison even in the prison gift was in operation in the gift of God that is residing in you that God listen when God gifted gifts you or when God gifts you when God gives you a gift your gift is unique to yourself the next gift given to Aquile is unique to Aquile the next gift given to Kwame is unique to Kwame. When the gift of God is activated in you, it doesn't matter the ugly place you may find yourself. Your gift can still work. Even in the prison, Joseph's gift was operating. Am I speaking to somebody here? Why are you going through that challenge? You are going through that challenge because the devil knows if you set you free, you will cause trouble in his kingdom. If you allow you to flow, you will change people and lead them into the kingdom of God through your gift. So he will frustrate you now. Can I tell somebody something here? You are being frustrated because you are great. You are being frustrated because that which is inside of you is greater than that which is in the world. You are being frustrated because when you drop one idea, ten people run with it and things work for them. So the devil knows, Tale, this is a general. This is a, a contingent living in one body. If I should allow this man to go scot free, ah, ah, I will not have peace of mind. Let me frustrate his finances. Let me frustrate his marriage. Let me frustrate any good thing around him so that he will give up. But listen to me. The devil tried to frustrate Joseph, but the gift inside of Joseph cannot be frustrated. Be, okay, he said, don't be afraid of he who can touch your body, who can frustrate the body, but be afraid of the one who can kill the flesh and deal with the spirit. The devil can frustrate your flesh, but that which is inside of you, he cannot frustrate. Am I prophesying to somebody? Your life may be basa basa in the physical, but in the spiritual, in the manifestation of your gift, they should give you time. They should give you time. Tell 
Tell somebody, you give me time. You give me time. I am surfacing. I am emerging. I am emerging. I am coming up. It's just a matter of time. Though my beginning may be slow, my latter ends are surely increased. Though my beginning may look ugly, I am that butterfly. I am that butterfly. My breath will be ugly. But wait until I grow. When I grow, I will mount out wings like eagle. Hey! Tell somebody, wait for me. No, I can't hear you. Mm, I didn't hear you. Tell somebody, wait for me. Tell somebody, wait for me. I am coming. I am coming. Mm, I am coming. I am coming. I am coming. The race is not for the swift. It is 1,500 meters. We are not traveling 100 meters. It is 1,500. You may start and may look like you are leading. You are leading. You are leading. You are leading. Oh, 1,500. You may look like you have crossed 400. It may look like you have crossed 800. And I'm still joking behind. But when they say it is the last lap, the supernatural power of God, the supernatural grace of God will come upon me. Ah, it will come upon me. I will be catapulted. Tell somebody I will end well. I will end well. I will end well. <laughs> the end of everything is better than the beginning. Is somebody here? Is somebody here? <laughs> At the end, you ask the question I ask you. At the end. <laughs> You get my message. Tell somebody who pushed me. I can't hear you say it again. They plotted evil. David found him, Joseph found himself in a prison. And the Bible says, even in the prison, he was prophesying. Even in the prison, he was manifesting. I must believe somebody here. Have you been there before? When people ask, ah, but where have you been all this while? Because it looks like you are giving me the original thing. Those who carry fake are making noise. No, 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 no. It's just because your time hasn't come yet. It's just because God has put you in the incubator. And you are maturing. A time will come that God will manifest you. And when God manifests you, every single thing about you will show that this is the guy. Ah, will show this is the lady. It will show, ah, this is the man. This is the man. Ah, let them mock you. Let them laugh at you. Let them say anything about you. But when your set time of manifestation, the other day, two things, one on the right of Jesus, one on the left of Jesus, and the Bible says the one on the left said to Jesus, are you not the one who claimed you are the Messiah of the Jews? You are the king of the Jews. Why don't you save yourself and save us also? But the Bible says the one on the right caught the revelation. Came under divine influence and said, shut up! Your foolishness is what has landed. Our foolishness is what has landed us on this cross. But this man has done nothing else. And look at what he said. He said, man, don't mind this foolish guy. Messiah, don't mind this foolish guy. But one request. Remember me in your kingdom. Somebody who is on the tree suffering. Somebody who is on the cross suffering. In that particular moment, where is the kingdom? Is suffering. We are all hung on the tree. And you are talking about a kingdom. You should be looking at your suffering. You are talking about a kingdom. The man has not even entered in the kingdom. So how can you talk about kingdom? When we are all hanging on the tree. But listen to me. Sometimes in your pain, you receive divine revelation. Sometimes in your suffering, God show you things you never knew before. Sometimes whilst everybody is disgracing you and saying things, that is where God gives you divine revelation. That is where God gives you divine acceleration. That is why God gives you new ideas. A new dimension I prophesy upon you. In your suffering, may God give you a new dimension. Ah, I don't feel well at all. In your dimension of pain, may God give you a revelation. Remember me. Remember me. Can I stop? Go back. I pray for somebody here whose heart is heavy. I pray for somebody here whose heart is heavy. I pray for somebody here who for so many years you don't know the next step to take. 
Should I go into this marriage? Should I step out? Should I do this? It is confusion. People are causing pain for you. I came to tell you, don't listen to them. Don't give here to them. Focus. Tell somebody, focus. No, tell somebody, focus. I can't hear you. Tell somebody, focus. No, say it again, focus. No, say it loudly, loudly. Now, beat yourself and say, my soul. Talk to yourself, talk to yourself. Focus. Say, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Can I tell you this, brother? No, I came here to motivate somebody, to encourage somebody. Today, I am encouraging. I'm asking with somebody here. Charlie, how life is going now? Things happening now. Sin is on ascendancy. Charlie, people are killing for money. People are doing things for money. Do you know what? When the president was about to declare uh, through Osafoma for that the public sector is full. Some of us were given that information on time. A senior officer came to my office and said, Papa, as VC told you, I said, not yet. This is what they are about to declare. Then later, my mom tested me, so, man of God, let's pray for our people out there. Because you see, it is dangerous. Huh? When you are in your final lap, and your father had to pay your fees. And your father died. Your mother is nowhere to be found. I have seen people and are paying fees. I'm paying fees up to now. Where at their final level, good student. Both parents were traveling to a funeral. They all died. It, it was a month later. Now they want somebody to bring the news. They came to my office and said, Papa, can you bring the news? I said, what level are they? 400. What year? Second semester. They have two weeks to run the, write their exams. I said, okay, let them finish their exams. Finish their exams. Invited them to my office. Called some few able men. I, I said, able men, my boys, PCU executive. Called some few of them. I said, okay, how are you? Congratulations. Do some party. And I started, I began to preach. <laughs> I preached to the guy for one hour. Build his spirit. I said, brother, where you have reached, you don't need mama, you don't need father. You are done. You will, you will survive. Whatever comes your way, say, no, nothing will help me. Nothing will break me. After building his faith, I said, papa is gone. Mama is gone. I said, ah, broke down for five minutes. Say, papa, no. I will not allow it. Why are they hiding it to me? I said, because you are right. No, oh, forget it. Took the phone, called the brother. Mama is gone. Daddy is gone. Hey, encourage yourself. I brought all the family. Pray for them. As I'm speaking to you, immediately he finished. We, are, we employed him at UPSO. We employed the senior brother. We employed everything. The guy is strong. Going around preaching the gospel, telling somebody anything can happen to you. Listen to me. That condition will not kill you. That situation will not kill you. You come to a point where it looks like everybody has given up on you. You turn to the right, they insult you. You turn to the left, Basa. And look at where am I going from here? You are not going anywhere. You are in the bosom of the Lord. The step of the righteous is ordered by the Lord. In the position where you cannot order anymore, God will come through for you. Upon all the frustration of Joseph, he became the prime minister. Oh, he became the prime minister. Is somebody in church? Tell somebody I'm going somewhere. <laughs> no, tell somebody I'm going somewhere. Say it one more time. I am going somewhere. Let me tell you another story and I'm, I'll end on my story. Some, uh, some time ago, there's this story that a king who has worked so hard, built strong empire, have money, bless people, wanted to give her, his daughter a hand in marriage. And because of his braveness, he said he needed a brave man who can marry the daughter. Do you know what happened? He made a declaration to the city and he said, all men should assemble at this river. He had a big uh, pond, a river, a, flow, a river flowing to the pond B, and he has a crocodile pool connected to it. Crocodile. Crocodile pool. And BB crocodile. So he said everybody should assemble around the crocodile pool. All men. So they assembled. And he said, 
this is only one condition. The person who is able to do that will take my daughter-in-law, give him half of my possessions. So he said, fine. And then, you know, the people want to rush. The first one jumped into the pool. He never came up. We saw blood. They finished him. The next one, they finished him. Third one, the third one, nobody was coming. See, so who is next? The king shouted, Do you want to marry my daughter? They say, Yeah! Go. They jump. <laughs> and there was I mean, fear, greed, others, and all that. A nice gentleman, calm gentleman, was just standing. There was no rush to enter. Then from nowhere, somebody pushed him into the crocodile pool. When they pushed him into the crocodile pool, all we heard was poop, 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 poop. Then the guy came up and they started celebrating him. Yay! 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 Congratulations! Yay! He didn't talk. Came out of the pool, stood where he was standing. They came, carry him. Yay, our bravest. Yay, am I. Everybody was singing. And they started congratulating him. They said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Put me down. They drop him. Then he asked, who pushed me? Who pushed me? Nobody can talk. Now I am the king's champion. If you don't talk, and I find out by my command, you will be killed. Who pushed me? The guy lifted his hand. He said, I am the one. He walked to the guy. Give me your hand. Thank you for pushing me. If not for you pushing me, you wouldn't congratulate me. Whilst others are dropping and they are dying, something tells me I can't die. But the confidence to enter was in there. You will be my right hand man from today. Thank you for pushing me. Why I am, am I telling you that? The devil will always meant it for evil. But God will turn it for your good. They pushed the young man with an evil intention. But God brought him out. Who pushed me? From today, go around looking for those who push you. If they have not pushed me at my other way, I will not start this one. If they have not pushed me, they pushed Joseph out of his comfort zone. And it was just a cloth. It was just a cloth with colors. Foolish cloth with colors that cannot buy a chicken. And they pushed him into the pit. When they pushed him into the pit, the pit vomited him into the next level of his life. When they got him into Potiphar's house, God said, this gift is so strong. It's vibrating too well to stay here. They push him into the cell. When they push him into the cell, the king's right arm man who pour water on the hands of the king, the king's one who cooked for the king was also there. The Bible says that by pushing to the next dimension, Joseph was introduced before the king. Who push you? Ask the person. I know you understand my message by now. Ask the person who pushed you. And I, I didn't hear that. Say, say it again. Say it again. Ask the person, do you need one more push? Kalabasha. He kolo bazadis. We have been reading about Roman soldiers up to today. We have been looking at Roman Empire up to today. But before you become a Roman soldier, you are picked at the age of seven years. They will throw you into a dungeon, beat you, beat you, before you also become a Spartan. For you to become a Roman commander, a process you have to go through. You have no reason. You have no idea. You will be tortured by great men. They punch you as if you are their co-equal. They take 
pain out of you. They take fear out of you. They, they break your heart. They melt it like powder. They make you so heartless so that you don't fear anything. And by the time you will melt to become a Roman soldier, you are heartless, you are hard, nothing can move you. What am I trying to say? They have pushed you. They are torturing you. Situation is torturing you. Problems are frustrating you. But you don't need to give up. I'm asking somebody here. You don't need to give up. Very soon, you will emerge. Very soon, you will surface. You will emerge in glory. You will surface in glory. And everybody will know that, Charlie, you have arrived. What those who rush, be mature. Premature people who rush and then they, they get money. They die quickly. What are we seeing? Youth of today. Quick money. Now, when you are even driving your car and you are walking, you are driving on the street and you see these cars they drive, you ask yourself, you cry, are you normal? <laughs> you see your age mates and riding good cars and you have to join Trotsky because your, your money, you know, when Uber came, people start th th thanking God and clapping. But now you can't even pay for Uber. You have work, huh? your salary, you are saving to pay rent and other things. And you see somebody you are even mature, and the car he or she is driving. And you go like, hey. You know, and sometimes if you, are, if you become so evil, you start cursing that this is Takawa, this is so, 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 they will die. these are them people who die quickly. Fornicators, adulterers, this is what they have. The ju 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 people, evil girls. This is, everybody you see in good car is a slave queen. But when you get there, somebody says, Me, it's not me, I suffered. I suffered. But you don't know the next person also. May God bring you to the same level. Can I prophesy? When you sit there with good car, thank God for your good car. When you sit there driving something good, say, Wow, I feel this girl. Wow, I feel this gentleman. Wow, very soon I am moving from Lagini Benz. I am getting into Chrysler. I am getting into Land Cruiser. I am getting into, I mean, you mention it, and very soon it shall be so in your life. Ah, ah, are you jealous? I will say it to myself very soon. When you see me as your pastor, don't speak negatively. May God punish you if you speak negatively. Because today I was prophesying and you didn't mind me. I am saying that very soon you will be driving the good cars. Very soon you will be living in good houses. Very soon you will smell good. You didn't want to receive it. I take it for myself. I will drive the good cars. I will live in mansions. I will build in my house. I will live in it. It shall be well with me. Begin to prophesy. Say, I will live in good houses. I will build mansions and I will live in them. I will drive in good cars. Lift up your voice. Begin to prophesy. Pray right now. Speak for yourself. Prophesy to yourself. It is well with my soul. I will not die in this condition. I am the Bosire. I will not be content. I am just being prepared. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth. Begin to pray. Open your mouth. Begin to pray. Open your mouth. Begin to pray. Ask the Lord. Pray. 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 Shut up all Gadarias. Wake up on Pray right now. Pray right now. Pray right now. Pray right now. It is well. It is well. Prophesy. It is well with me. Prophesy. It is well with me. Prophesy. It is well with me. Prophesy. Asatadabada. Rekopala Gadibihatas. Rekotopala Gatisa. Yakotopala Bolihatas. Rekopotoli Bihatos Abayas. Italabagados. In the name of Jesus. Yakotopala Bosias. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand with me. I want you to pray this one prayer and we'll be, we'll be out of here. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring me into my rest. Lord, bring me into my rest. Whatsoever is eating me up. Any challenge that I'm in. That the enemy keep whispering to me that I will not survive. Thank you for your word. If Joseph survived, I will also survive it. Open your mouth and prophesy. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, help me survive. Help me survive in that condition. In that terrible condition that I find myself. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, help me to survive. Father, help me survive. Lord, help me survive. Mashatabala Gadabash. Rakotopolo Balabarakadis. Rekopele Rebedes. Help me, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Pray, 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 pray. Lord, help me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And lift up your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord. If Joseph survived, I will also survive. I am not dying now. That challenge is preparing me for my next level. Thank you, Father, for I am victorious. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together and take your seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.